Friends and family, thank you guys so much for joining. Every day is a Saturday with me, myself, and I, Brian Roof, and my special guest, Jesse Reiner. What's up, Jesse? How you doing, man? What's up, man? Thank you for having me again. I enjoyed it last Absolutely. Time. Yeah, man. We're definitely uh, going to have you around for the next couple of Thursdays as we go through all these retro games and all the consoles and stuff like that. Um, uh, you're, you're, you got to look at all the stuff behind you. <laughs> I mean, uh, this guy definitely loves his retro games, so that's why he's here. He's also a United States Marine veteran. Doesn't get much better than that. All right, brother. So today's episode, guys, we're going to go through Atari. We're going to go through the different games. Um, you know, it was uh, kind of uh, the state of the art back then. It was definitely huge in the gaming world. They weren't only huge with consoles, but they also, you know, were huge in the arcade world. And I know growing up, some of us were, you know, I know I went to the arcade as much as I could. What about you? <laughs> oh, I'm so obsessed with arcades. Uh, that's like my goal here in the near future is to turn my man cave into an arcade. Right. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, I think that's probably a lot of men's dreams. I know for me, I right. would I would love having a whole bunch of those old arcade games set up in there, man. It would be so awesome. And nothing beats the uh, noise coming from the machines and the lights and that whole ambiance is just amazing to me. It's always just been something that instantly put me in a good mood and uh, I've just got to have, just got to do it. I know, exactly. All right, well, let's get through. Let's go uh, through some of these games that were back in the day and uh, let's see if they, they uh, resonate with you for, you know, if you recognize any of them or if you played them. Absolutely. The number one one right off rip, I do recognize this one. It's called Asteroids. Oh, yeah. Um, definitely remember playing some Asteroids. It was a fun game. Uh, I don't think I ever beat that one. I, You know, these these guys had a lot of uh, levels and stuff. It got pretty difficult back then. Yeah, people forget how hard video games were back then. Uh, Asteroids was one of those games that almost seemed like it didn't have an ending but you're like almost competing for a high score because I've never seen an ending. I don't know if there is or not, but obviously it was right. a little before my time. But uh, yeah, I do remember playing this not only uh, on the Atari, but at the arcade. And uh, it was a pretty good port, you know, ported over to the Atari. So uh, I know it's also number four on their bestseller list. So uh, it was a huge game back for 1979. It was a, uh, a huge impact on that home console gaming. You just had to have Astros. It wasn't just, and it wasn't just a console game. That one was also in the arcade. I mean, right. it was big to the community. I know a lot of people really enjoyed it. And then um, later on, they would come out with like a Galaga and stuff like that. But um, Space Invaders. Yeah. I don't I don't think I've ever heard of Space Invaders. What about you? Oh, Space Invaders was, uh, it's probably the reason why we have home console games to begin with. Uh, this was so popular in Japan that it actually caused a shortage in the hundred yen coins because that's wow. what everyone was using to play space invaders. Space invaders impact was huge. And when it finally started coming to the uh, consoles uh, for the Atari, it quickly became one of the best sellers must have. I mean, without space invaders, I might not be playing Mario and uh, stuff like that. Right. Yeah. Well, that's awesome, man. Good information on that. Uh, what about combat? Combat was that one. Combat was a uh, pack-in game uh, for the Atari Twenty Six Hundred back in the day. Uh, there have only ever been like two pack-in games for the Atari, I believe. One was Combat, and uh, the other was uh, Pac-Man, which was a disaster on the Atari. <laughs> yeah, right. But uh, yeah, Combat uh, uh, basically it was like two tanks. You're navigating through the maze, and you had to fire at each oh. other. Oh. Okay, yeah, yeah, definitely. Now I remember. I think I got to probably see more of the the actual game itself to know whether I played it or not. The names themselves might not be so right. much resonate with me. Right. Uh, but yeah, basically, you're taking your tanks on opposite ends of the uh, screen yeah. there, and you're navigating through, and you got to turn at the right angle to fire at your friend or whoever you're playing with. That's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, now you're bringing me back, man. That's why you're on the show, man. You, you know, you know your stuff. That's for sure. Yep. Um, Adventure. I didn't. I've never heard that one. Yeah, I've never played Adventure, but I know it's on their uh, top ten list. Um, okay. Uh, 
just looking at it, it was one I never had, but uh, it says it's huge for the uh, action adventure games. Like, you know, without that, we probably wouldn't have, again, Mario and stuff because. Oh, also, one other thing about adventure is uh, the uh, creators snuck in uh, Easter eggs. So they actually ah. hid their names in the games, and uh, you could find it by going through certain rooms. That's one tidbit that I remember uh, from a Atari oh, documentary cool. I watched one time. Wow, that's really cool. Uh, Pitfall. I do remember Pitfall. Yeah. What about you? Pitfall, Pitfall is definitely... Pitfall was a uh, classic. Uh, it was one of not only the best-looking games, but it was one of the best-playing games uh, for that time period. Uh, you know, 1982, this game sold over 4 million copies as well. Uh, wow. But yeah, I just remember, this was probably the most played game that I ever played on the uh, Atari 2600. Uh, really, really awesome game. Uh, even looking at the graphics, way ahead of its time. So, uh, yeah, yeah. And I, you know, I think at, at the time when I was, you know, playing these games, I was younger, right? So. Right. I, I think my my mindset was a little bit different as when I got older, I was more, you know, competitive and stuff. But back then it was just playing the games just to have fun. You know what I mean? Right. You know, there wasn't the whole thing like, oh, I got to win. I got to win. But um, just to get away and have, you know, these games you get lost in them for a while. Right. Well, my experience with Atari came after I already had a Nintendo Entertainment System for years and years. So I was kind of used to uh, the advancement of the Nintendo and its gameplay. But when I went back to uh, Atari years later, uh, Pitfall was one of those games I was more drawn to because it more closely resembled the NES, basically, uh, not only in graphics, right. but gameplay. Um, you know, it was a little later in the uh, Atari 2600 lifespan, so I feel like they figured out how to program games a little bit better uh, then. But Pitfall, all-time classic. And uh I believe one of the best sellers on Atari. Wow. Yeah, it was a fun game. It was a lot of fun game. Yeah. Missile Command. I do remember that one. That one also was another fun game. Yes. Uh remember this more in the uh, arcade uh than Atari. Right. Uh yeah. Obviously the arcade version is always gonna be head and shoulders above the uh, home console version. But uh, Missile Command was a uh, great game, and uh, as you progress, it just got harder and harder to try to take out those missiles and protect your city there. Yeah, a lot of these games were were very similar. I mean, right. you know, in the way that they were made in terms of, like, you know, you, you basically go left, right, a little bit up and back, and then you're shooting and stuff like that, and then it's like 100 and something levels. Who knows how many levels there is. Right. Um, but I think a lot of the games were just to play, like I said, to have fun and, and, you know, not necessarily to beat the game. <laughs> right. Hey, I don't, I don't think a lot of these old school games had in these. You just kept playing them until, yeah. until you uh, yeah. had game over basically. <laughs> or you got tired of the game. One of the two, right? right? Uh, river raid. I don't remember river raid. Yeah, definitely. Uh, not one that resonates with me. No. Uh, what? Um, Pac Man. Yes. Uh, no, Pac Man. Yeah, of course, everybody knows Pac Man. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, Pac Man was a uh, arcade sensation. And uh, the weird thing about Pac Man and Atari is this: um, Atari finally acquired the rights to Pac Man, which is a big deal for a home console creator. Hey, uh, we're gonna make you a yeah. Pac Man game that you can play at home. You don't have to go to arcade, right? Well, they acquired this way late in the year, and they still wanted it to be released for Christmas time. You know, that's when everybody buys video games the most. So yeah, the guy they sure. hired to uh, create the port from arcade to the Atari, they paid him this huge sum right up front. Because in his contract, they said, we'll pay you for every game manufactured. Now, normally you get a royalty for every game that's sold. So right, the better yeah. product you produce... You know, the more units it sells, the more you get paid. Well, Atari wasn't too bright in the uh, contracts back then, and they paid him for every game manufactured. So they manufactured over 12 million copies of this game. <laughs> with, with Hell yeah, copies. mass produced, man. Right. So this guy got paid right off the rip. And guess what? I believe they only sold 7 million copies of Pac-Man. 
So they had all these leftover copies just stored in warehouses, just taking up space that they couldn't sell, but yet they still had to pay the programmer for. And if you ever played Pac-Man on Atari versus the arcade, there's no comparison. I mean, it's glitchy, it's blocky, it's ugly, it sounds bad. I mean, it's not fun to oh, play gosh, at all. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. as a kid, that was one of the games you had to have. You had to have Pac-Man, and, and we did play it, but it was definitely not one of my favorites, but a huge blunder. Yeah, I can remember as a kid going to the restaurants and stuff like that, and they would have a Pac-Man, little sit-down Pac-Man game that you could go sit down and play. I mean, yep. Pac-Man was almost everywhere you go. It's, right. You go sit there and wait at a restaurant. There would be one at a restaurant. You go, you know, to the supermarket. There's little arcade games. Pac-Man, there's always a Pac-Man or a Miss Pac-Man in there. Absolutely. But uh, that was definitely, it's still a fun game for me. I still have a lot of fun when I play it. Yes. Um, But... Yeah, it's definitely uh, one that uh, still, I mean, Pac-Man, if anybody says Pac-Man, they're like, oh, yeah, I know oh, Pac-Man. Yeah. If you're a gamer, no you've how long. probably play, played Pac-Man for sure. Uh, an interesting fact that I thought is that um, Atari and Sears were, you know, I, I guess Sears had a lot to do with trademarking the games for a while, and I didn't know that. Uh, no, I'm, I wasn't familiar with that either. Uh you know, back in the day, this was wild, wild west territory when it came to these home consoles. Yeah, uh, people right. didn't realize that other companies, third party companies, were making Atari games that you could play in your Atari without having to have licenses or anything. So I could make an Atari game, make it sell millions of units, and Atari didn't get paid a single cent off of those uh, sales. So that was wow. actually one of the downfalls of the uh, home console market uh, back in the uh, late 70s, early 80s, and caused it to crash, is that it was just flooded with so many bad consoles and third-party games for the systems that it just, the bubble popped, you know, like the uh, dot-com era in the 90s, the home console wars were the same way. There's just that big burble bust, and it all went to zero. Yeah, it sounds like uh, Atari was kind of the guinea pig for a lot of the the late, you know, later consoles and stuff like that. They, you know, they had to go through a lot of struggles. Probably lost a lot of money. Yes, um, from the sounds of it, and and probably could have made a lot more money had they, you know, uh, been smarter with it. But it, this was new to the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I don't know that anybody thought it was going to be such a sensation right. that it was. But it's it's evolved huge. You know, right. as we know. You know. Uh, uh, their impact was so huge that it could have been even bigger if they didn't make these uh, mistakes. But like something like when they released their first Pong machine, within a couple of days, it stopped working. You know, they put it in a little mm, bar yeah. and uh, people were playing it. And the <laughs> bar owner called and said, hey, uh, this Pong machine isn't working. And uh, the creators at Atari was like, oh, no, we can't even get this thing running for a couple of days. So they went and checked it out. It was just jam packed full of quarters. You know, this was such a big deal. People had never seen this before that yeah. the game wasn't broken. It just wouldn't accept any more quarters because people just kept feeding this thing, wanting to play more. So it was, it was like, we can fix this. But uh, that's how big Atari was. It was brand new. No one ever seen anything like it. There were innovators in their field. Yeah, sure, they made some mistakes. But without them, you know, we wouldn't be where we are today. So you have to pay. Yeah, I, they definitely they definitely led the way and paved the paved the way for all these other consoles and and stuff like that. I mean, they they went through a lot of the trial and the error for everybody. It sounds like, but right. I mean, they they did. You can't you can't deny that they produced some great product out there. I mean, it it really made everybody love the video game world. I mean, I think Atari. You can thank Atari for a lot of today's environment in the gaming world absolutely absolutely and that's why we started off with atari on this show is can't you can't uh start it off with any other consoles without starting off with atari that's just my opinion oh yeah absolutely <laughs> and i know there's a lot of other consoles out there that were kind of around the same time but atari to me definitely put video gaming on the map absolutely i mean it's like telling a story about the marines without talking about ton tavern you know, you got to know where sure, you started right. from. You got to know where you came <laughs> yeah. from. So, right. So it's, you know, so you guys out there that are, you know, love video games and stuff like that. And you're on your Xbox and your P3 
PS5s and stuff like that. Don't forget, people struggled with Ataris and stuff like that before then, and you got to appreciate the old consoles. Right. And uh, nowadays, too, they're also coming out and they're making, like, retro games where you can go out and buy the Atari now, and it's already preloaded with a whole bunch of games. Same with the the Nintendo. Uh, It sounds like they're doing the same thing with Game Boy. So uh, that's really cool. And as you guys can see, that those games were so popular that they're actually bringing them back because people really absolutely love them. I mean, they wouldn't bring it back if it wouldn't sell, right? Absolutely. I mean, and obviously when you get up to like uh, our ages, you want to go back and relive that childhood moment. You know, this game was so special, yeah. like Pitfall. I remember playing Pitfall for literally hours and playing it with friends and relatives. And I mean, you have so yeah. many positive memories associated with these games that, uh, you know, it's fun to go back and relive those moments. Absolutely. All right, let's see uh, Warlo- Warlords. I never, I never heard that. Yeah, one. I never played Warlords. Uh, there's Breakout. Yeah, Breakout was a great game. Um, and then they came. Well, it was Super Breakout. Is it the same? It was a little more advanced, I believe. Um, I believe uh, Steve Jobs was released 1981 for uh, Breakout. Right? Didn't Steve Jobs work on that project? Ah, uh, shoot, I'm not sure. It says the developer Atari Inc. release date was 1981 and a game that builds upon the concept of Pong. Right. I remember some factoid. Well, that's Super Breakout I'm talking about. Then Bounty Bob Strikes Back on the Millipede Missile Command Star Raids Super Breakout. Oh, I guess they did. Yeah, so Super Breakout is the second to Breakout. Yep. Yars Revenge. <laughs> You know, I played this game uh, when I was younger, but I didn't quite understand it. Uh, I didn't have an instruction booklet or anything. I couldn't Google it. So I didn't quite <laughs> understand what was going on with this game. But what was funny, oh, man, I was crazy. watching an episode of The Walking Dead. Uh, I forget which season it was, maybe been five or six, where one of the characters was in the uh, Negan's place where he was in the compound that Negan was like the ruler over. And uh, yeah, yeah. one of the dudes sold out so he could play like this game in particular, Yars <laughs> Revenge. So, you know, he's, he's basically sold out his friends to play this game. So it must be a, a great to game. Go play yours. I didn't understand it. <laughs> yeah, well, of course, we didn't have nothing to look up and how to do things, though, know, right? All the cheat codes you can go look up online. Exactly. Pong. Everybody knows Pong, I'm pretty sure. Right. Pong was pretty popular back then. Where where do they fall in the, the top 10 list? Do they do they rank in there? Uh, I don't see Pong on a top 10 list, but... I'm surprised. I mean, it, really it had to be one of the most popular it, games ever. I mean, literally ever. It um, definitely was. Not only uh, is the re- Pong's the reason why Atari's around, basically... Um, I- even inspired uh, home consoles that did nothing but play Pong. You know, it wasn't just a cartridge-based yeah. game. I mean, I literally had a console system that only played Pong. It was about the size of a coffee table <laughs> in the 80s. It had four big knobs and about yeah. four or five switches up top. You could play single player <laughs> or multiplayer, like up to four players because it four knobs, and all you did was up and down, knock the ball back and forth, and it would keep score. But, uh, yeah, Pong was so huge. And, uh, like I said, without Pong, there probably wouldn't be Atari. Without Atari, we wouldn't have PS5. So, Yep, exactly. Uh, I really like it. Now it's it's great going through this because uh, it makes me appreciate it even more. I mean, now that I'm kind of. I never, you know, went through and looked at the history of Atari and stuff like that. But I, before we did the show, I kind of did a little bit of some, you know, digging in. And, it, and I was like, I was really shocked on some of the things I was reading about it. But it, it impressed me even more that, like, I feel like Atari was the leader in in, in gaming. Right. Uh, let's see. Air Sea Battle. I don't remember that one. Don't remember that. It's a head-to-head shooting game, though. Oh, uh, haunted house. I 
I have a memory of this cartridge, but I don't remember that. By ghosts, spiders, and something that looks like a furry beach ball with eyes. The game ends if you get hit by monsters. <laughs> yeah, I think that was one of those simple games where you just moved around on the screen and try not to get touched by stuff. But I, I know you're going to know this one. Frog. Oh, yeah, definitely. Didn't you just talk about Frogger or something like that recently? Uh, no, not Frogger, but, uh, you know. I, I... Oh, no, you were. That's right. You were talking about the um, the, tr- the other turtle game that we were talking about last week. Um, Frogger, though, was a very fun game. Yes. I st- one of my earliest memories was uh, being at a skating rink, wearing roller skates and playing Frogger on the arcade. <laughs> they have new versions of it now. Yeah. Uh they still make it, but it's uh they don't call it Frogger anymore. I forgot what it's called, but there's something very similar to it because my kids love playing it. Crossy like, Road. Oh, it reminds me of Frogger. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my kids love that game. Uh Demon Attack. I don't remember Demon Attack, but it sounds like an awesome game. <laughs> The player was represented by a spaceship that shot vertically at demons that shot right back. Okay, so it's like a Galaga or Space Invaders clone? Something like that. Yeah, it sounds like it. Uh, Miss Pac-Man. I mean, I think uh, everybody knows every sort of Pac-Man. Right. Classics. Solaris. Solaris. I know that was a pretty popular game. I don't remember Solaris. I don't think I've ever played it. It was... uh, like a space game as well. It did a lot of space games back then. Oh, yeah. Everything was you know? space. Well, you know, uh, the space race and uh, all the yeah. stuff we were doing in the 70s or, you know, sending people to the moon and all the uh, Russia uh, satellites and stuff that were going up. So we we're constantly in a battle with yeah. Russia to do more space stuff. So also Star Wars. So. Right. Crystal Castles. Don't remember this one either. Was one of the first arcade games that actually had an ending that you could work towards. Hey. It features Bentley Bear. <laughs> so, hey, as we were saying, yeah. no games had an ending. These guys just uh, pretty much solidified that for yep. us. Berserk. Berserk. I do remember Berserk. That one came out in 1982, an extreme early shooter in which you control a green protagonist armed with laser guns. Yes. Uh, ba- <laughs> basically, you got a couple of pixels, you move around and shoot at each other. So it was like the first Call of Duty. <laughs> right? Yeah, man. It, you know, it's funny to me how the games back then, you know what it kind of reminds me of is the is the graphics of like Minecraft. Yes. In a way, you know what I mean? Right. Uh, Minecraft all boxy pixelated and stuff like that. Absolutely. And the kids absolutely love Minecraft, right. man. Well, that's what originally drawn me to the game. I was like, Oh, I love these graphics. You know, you get these eight bit graphics, but it looks modernized as well. Uh, so I love the look of it. I mean, it just wasn't my favorite game to play, but I understand why it was so yeah. popular. And actually, Minecraft's the best-selling game of all time. That's what they say, man. Yeah. It is really popular. And, I mean, because it is cool, though. You can create your own world and do all kinds of things. I mean, I know my kids love getting creative. It, it opens up a whole creative mind, and you can make your own worlds and stuff like that. That's really Absolutely. cool. Absolutely. I think that's super important. All right. Yeah, it is. It is. It's great for the kids. It's, you know, it helps them use their imagination. Right. Uh, Atlantis. Atlantis. Um, I never played it, but I have a, one of my best friends has super fond memories of this game. Uh, it looks really, really good too, as well for a 1980s, uh, Atari game. Uh, yeah, it sounds like it's a really popular game. It, it sounds like a lot of people really yes. like it. But uh, I didn't have any memories of it. But uh, when my buddy found yeah, out either. that I did retro video games, he's like, you got to find me a copy of Atlantis. And I was like, I've never heard of it. And he was describing it to me and uh, looking up the game. And it's exactly how he described it. He obviously had super fond memories of it. It's on the bestseller list. So it must be an awesome one. Yeah. We got a couple more. Let's see. Defender. It was... Defender, like, uh, 
missile command, basically? Let's see. Yeah, sound, yeah, yeah, yep. It's so you kind of got like a mountain and stuff like that, and you're trying to not let it then break it down or something like that. Right. I, That's kind of almost like hard missile to tell command. Us. Yeah, it's very similar. And then the last one we got here is uh, Gravitar. Oh, wow. I've never heard of that one. It takes the 23rd spot in the best Atari 2600 games list, bringing all classic arcade action to your sofa. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was that concludes the list that we went through. There's tons more of games. I mean, right. I don't even know how many games they came out with, but it, it was a lot in... in um, a lot of fun and stuff like that. Also, I noticed too, like, um, um, they are trying to uh, bring uh, back the game, and it's you know, like I said earlier, and you can now buy it at you know, uh, there's eBay's and stuff like that. There, I seen, dude, the Star Wars game was going for like some ridiculous price, like $20,000 wow. or something like that. Cause it had never been open right. and it was still in its stuff. So, I mean, I guess there is some value to some of these games. If you still have them, I, I mean, I wish I would have held on to a lot more of my old consoles and games and stuff like right. that. When I was younger, I, if had, I known, you know, where they would all go eventually. Exactly. So, you know, th so you guys, if you're watching this, let this be a, you know, a little bit of a, a warning to you, keep your Xboxes, keep your PlayStations, keep your games around because eventually one day, you know, they're going to be a retro game and you can still be like, I still got mine. You know what I mean? So I wish I could say that about my Ataris, my Nintendos, my Segas, all those things that I used to have. Yeah, I can literally remember having at least three Ataris. I probably had five or six Nintendos in my lifetime. You know, either would be lost, traded, damaged or something, and you would have to get a new one. And all the library of games, if I had all those now, you know, not only would it be fun to go back and play, but you're also sitting on a gold mine. Like some of these games, if you right. had them complete in box, like you were saying, I mean, literally thousands and thousands of dollars. So uh, I definitely learned my lesson there, and uh, I wish I could go back and uh, get all these uh What's weird is I also got into retro gaming collection at like a really bad time where the prices are sky high because it's so popular yeah. now. It started to get, yeah, because everything, right. it's really, it's starting to be popular again. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because they're starting to make all these old, they're starting to bring them back. And, and you know, so now everybody's like, oh, man, I miss it, you know, and right. making these things with the preloaded games on them and stuff like that, it just, uh, People are like, hell yeah, let me get back on and I want to play some Mario again. <laughs> I mean, if you think back to uh, what we're doing on uh, TikTok with the live streaming, uh, you know, I saw people playing retro video games on TikTok. And I was like, oh, wow, I want to do that. So I had to grind my way to get a thousand followers so I could go live on TikTok. And then people started watching me and that inspired them to do the same thing. So I have so many people that... Uh, I inspired and when I see them, there's a, like, Hey, uh, this is Jesse he inspired me to, uh, do retro video gaming on TikTok. You know, I saw him playing super Mario brothers three one day. So, uh, you know, that cycle just keeps going and going and just keeps getting more and more popular. So. That's great, man. And it's great that people, you know, still appreciate it, uh, right. to that degree. And, um, it, it, I think a lot of times too, you know, with the way things are in our today's environment, we, we forget things, you know, sometimes we forget, Oh shoot. And then when someone brings it out, you're like, Oh my gosh, I remember that. And then, you know, and then as you, you know, it unravels one memory, then all of a sudden all these other memories start coming to you and you're like, Oh, I remember that too. Yeah. I mean, that's how it was when I started watching some of your videos too. Like I said, it was like, doot, 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 doot. you know, and I'm like, Oh man, you know, just hearing those sounds and stuff like that. And it really, you know, brings you back. Cause when you were a kid, I, I know when I woke up and stuff, and I was super excited, like, oh, man, I can't wait to get to pl you know, play the game, you know. Right. <laughs> Mom's going to let me play for a little bit. <laughs> yep, absolutely. What do you think your uh, your fondest memory is of uh, Atari? Um, I used to go over to uh, my cousin's house, uh, like after school and stuff, and we would just sit down and play in his room together. He had one of those 
if you think back, classic retro setup rooms. You had the little small TV. We had Atari. We had <laughs> Nintendo. We had G.I. Joe's, He-Man. Uh, you know, just all those classic toys and stuff. Uh, little Pac-Man arcades that were like real small units, but you could still play Pac-Man on it. Uh, man, just all this cool stuff that we uh, took for granted back then. But uh, even when I see it today in uh, like vintage toy stores, I still uh, have all those reminiscing memories and uh, all that nostalgic feel-good feelings. Uh, but yeah, pro- probably just hanging out with my cousin. Uh, actually, he uh, passed away uh, last year. So uh, mm. that's right to hear. It's all right, but you know, I still got those fond memories. And you know, when you go back and do stuff like Absolutely. this, it's like having that time machine. I can go back and remember taking turns playing Pitfall, you know, on the Atari with him. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember my little setup too back in the day. Um, <laughs> had a little you know tv that probably had the you know oh, the yeah. turn you could turn the channels and it was like i think you had 13 channels yep. on it with the antenna yes on the back and <laughs> and uh my tv was sitting on like a wooden bench and i would just you know i the tari i think my dad came up on it and um he was a huge galaga guy i mean my dad loved galaga um I could always, that's one of my fondest memories of my dad and in, in with arcade games is that was about the extent of his knowledge was Galaga. I got him to play tech mobile <laughs> yeah. later on and uh, he loved tech mobile, but I mean, beyond going tech mobile, it would be too technical for him, you know, and you know, parent playing with your parents back then, man, they play with a controller and they're, you know, moving the yeah. controller as they're doing all their, <laughs> I remember. Uh, but, I remember. uh, yeah, the, I man, I, I gotta say, Atari was a lot of fun. It was different. You had the little joystick, yep. and you had the little buttons on it. Um, then you know, before they came out with other little buttons and stuff like that. But Atari, I can't say enough about how what a great game it was, how instrumental it was, leading the you know laying the path for the rest of the consoles and the games. Um, but what else do you got to add for Atari, man? Anything good? Well, I did see that you. I did see that you saw this pretty cool Lego set that you can build an Atari set. Yeah. That was cool, man. Yeah. And how how ironic was it that we're talking about Atari and you you find exactly. that exactly? That's what really blew my mind. You know, uh, you told me we we're gonna do a segment on uh, Atari, and just strolling through Barnes and Noble to kill time before I pick up my teenager from school, and I see that. And obviously it catches my attention because Atari has that classic look, you know, with the wood grain and the joystick, you know. And I was like, oh, my, what is this? I was like, oh, it's Lego. And, man, just such an awesome piece of Lego. I mean, you're combining two awesome things, Legos and video games. That's what I was going to say, man. Two two big time, you know, things that when we were kids, man, Legos and Atari, I mean – how awesome. And it looked so realistic. Exactly. Dude. This is Lego blocks. You know, if you had like a setup, like you made me want to buy it, man. I was like, Oh right. my gosh. I, and, and, and at Barnes and Noble, right. I was yeah, like, which wow. I know the uh, Nintendo one, they have a Nintendo that looks like that. Calls it a little TV, a scene from Mario has a Nintendo cartridge. You can slide into it. It's around 250 bucks. So I'm <sighs> sure the Atari is pretty close. Dude, that is actually really cool, man. I mean, I was impressed. Right. I, it made, like I said, it made me want to go right. out and buy I one. I mean, especially if you're like me and you put a lot of stuff into like your, my setup behind me, like all this stuff I chose for different reasons. And uh, a lot of it, my four year old picked out, like he picked out the awesome uh, Mario picture here. And he's like, you can put it in your main cave for I your TikTok it. people. So if you have a setup like this, have that uh, Lego uh, Atari set set up or the Nintendo set. It would just look amazing. Oh, my uh, gosh. You know, your man cave uh, or your she shed or your game room or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I I love it, man. I love that they're uh, bringing it all back. And even even movies from our time. Yeah. I mean, they're trying to do, you know, things. I think it's because there was great movies. There was a lot of good stuff from back in those days that we just can't forget. And that's why I think they're trying to bring a lot of it back. Right. Miss those yeah. days sometimes definitely D- things were a little bit uh simpler and stuff like that we didn't have so much uh so many other things to 
you know, keep us off of our focus. Do, do you realize what kids today are missing out on? Friday night, you go into the video rental store. It's packed full of people renting movies for the weekend. You know, everyone's just got off work. Blockbusters, yeah, blockbusters. man. Yeah. The smell of the popcorn and the candies at Blockbuster. You know, you can get all that there. I mean, kids will never <laughs> yeah. know, you know, flipping on the backs of all the video game boxes and trying to make a decision on what video game you're going to play that day based off of three or four screenshots of the game. So, <laughs> you know, like me. Dude, yeah, man. I would get the uh, game and that, read you, the, You're really bringing yeah, me back. I would read the instruction booklet all the way home. So I would already have the information downloaded in my brain so I could just put it in and start <laughs> playing. But kids today will never know what that's like. And that's so sad because that was such a fond memory for me. You know, you're sitting in there walking around Blockbuster. You got two games in your hand and your mom's telling you you only get one. Right. And you're looking at them. <sighs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, kids, I, I don't think they understand that anymore. You know, now it's like you go on, you click a button, boom, and there it is. Well, that, we used to have to go search and look, and then sometimes you go try to, you you see a video game you liked, and you go to grab it, and oh, there's, oh, no, yeah, there's no copies left. Yeah. <laughs> no copies yeah. left. So, but those were good times, were. man. I'm really excited for uh, next Thursday. The next Thursday, we're going to be going over yes. Nintendo. Now, um, I'm ex super excited about that because that's really when I started getting involved in Thank video you. games. I just touched the surface with Atari, but uh, Nintendo really, you know, stole my heart. And uh, I played that for the longest time until Sega came out. And then once Sega came out, I didn't look Absolutely. back on uh, Nintendo. I love that our video but, uh, game. All right, man, I guess. I oh, love sorry. that our video game uh, trajectory. Or we're like on the same plane. You know, both into Nintendo. That's what's great about it, too. Yeah. We're, that's this. What makes this show so much better for you and I is one, we're born in 81, right. right? And so we, we definitely went through the same genres and stuff right. together. And, and, uh, we both have a like for the video games and we kind of went through the same iteration. You, you're, you ended up with Xbox, yes. right? Yeah. Same here. And like I said, we both were PlayStation fans and then, Xbox took us away. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, hey, I really appreciate everyone listening. If you guys are listening to this, you can listen on Anchor, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or Apple Podcasts, pretty much all the podcast uh, platforms. If you guys want to watch this, you can watch it on Spotify or also on um, YouTube. And if you guys haven't subscribed yet, go please subscribe, like the videos. It will definitely help us get it out. Um, again, thank you so much, Jesse. Jesse will be joining us for the next few Thursdays as we go through all the different retro games and the consoles as we, you know, and we'll go ahead and end up with uh, the newest uh, consoles. But I appreciate your time, Jesse. Thank you. you have a great day, right, man. Thank you so much for having and, uh, me. We'll see you uh, next Thursday, right. brother. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Boom. Uh, all right, doggy. We'll see you, man.